Was he younger or older than you? Huh? Was he younger or older? Older than I am. He'd be a couple of years older. This is when we were first married. This is over my grandmother's house. Mm -hmm. And this is a, and this is a Lincoln I had, big old Lincoln. And when I first met her, she was standing out front. She was in the Mariners and she was standing out front of the house. And I pulled up there and I had a, uh, the girls, I had to make sure that they all had a ride home and and if uh, if they didn't get somebody to give them a ride home, then I had to take them home, give them a ride. Sure. Home. That was one of the rules. <laughs> and she was standing out there, and I told her to get out of the way unless she got run over. <laughs> and that was the start of everything, huh? Well, that made her mad, and she wouldn't speak to me for a year. <laughs> a whole year. Yeah. So what changed after that well, year? Well, um, 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 Ramona. Um, Ramona Shear, she ended up being Ramona Ashley, and uh, uh, there was a, oh, who the heck was the other? There was two or three other gals there. And whenever we'd go someplace, like we'd go down to, um, 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 Vancouver, Portland, and go to Jensen Beach, a bunch of getting a car and spitting that big old Mercury. In fact, it was so, had so much room you could stand in the back seat and put your feet out and straight and not touch it so we put a bench in there wow and then uh, there'd be and, and sometimes we go down to jensen beach and go well they all pushed jean around where she had to sit in the front seat <laughs> and the others was in the back you know and in there and we go down to jensen beach and and um, um ride the roller coaster and things like that and, and uh, um, <clears throat> That's how she got over being mad at me, I guess. And, and uh, then um, you would go down together. We had a, we used to have some good good times going. And then all of, when you get a bunch of the Sea Scouts that um, um, uh, in there, and I had um, uh, uh, it was uh, Glenn Portwood, and he had real good ears. And then. Um, um, Bill Cutis was, um, um, could blow the bugle. He really gives the bugle. And um, <clears throat> we'd go down to Longview there, and uh, the, they used to have a big box right there, and you'd pull up to a stoplight, and, <clears throat> and then Glenn Port would have sat in the front seat and had the window down, and, and Cutis would be in the back seat and have the window back there all down. And, uh, he could tell when the light was going to change from uh, uh, red to green, you know, and as soon as it turn, turned, he'd say, now, Bill, and Bill would blow to the races under the bugle. You know? <laughs> and then we'd come putting out across it. Well, at first, at first, the first car we had was an old, I had was an old Packard. Spendy. It cost me 20 bucks to buy the car. Wow. And, and we'd get a whole bunch of, of uh, guys in the back and, and uh, they had, we had quite a time, but they, they, we'd put out through it. They would be going to race in here, this old Packard would come putting out across the street there. And, uh, <laughs> I bet that was something cool to see. Yeah, oh, we had a lot of fun with that old Packard. And, and uh, then it, uh, um, one time we was trying to, Something happened and we was having trouble getting it started. And if you had primers on it, you could put gas in primers. And go for a long time there, and you could just stick the crank in, and you almost had to jump down on a crack crank just to get it turned over to start. And Dad's car, in the winter time, the Dad's car when when the, the starter wouldn't kick loose the grease on it, and it would be too cold. So I, I'd start that old Packard up and push the car and start it so he could go to work the mill and uh, when he was still working a fiber there. And he had people that rode with him down there so he had to go pick them up and back. And once he got it started in the, mo in the morning, I'd about the packer, but then I'd walk to school. We wouldn't, I wouldn't take the packer to the school. Anyway, I couldn't. But in fact, I really didn't have a license to drive it on the streets. And, 
but I, I bought that Packard and that run that, and then the, then when I got a license, we run that Packard. And, I mean, that was quite the old car. Right? Then it finally, anyhow, it got to where one time we couldn't have started, and Kenny Riblet, uh, there was Kelso Junk over here at Kelso, and they had a big truck, and <coughs> they hooked it, took the truck on that Packard and was, was um, um, pulling it, and all of a sudden it fired or something. Anyhow, the gas and stuff that was priming right in it blew the pan off of the truck, it blew the thing, busted the pan, blew it. And uh, we hunted all over the country trying to couldn't find a New pan for the engine, you know, so and the bus broke it up, and, and so uh, I jumped the old Packard out. And what year was that? Uh, 1927. 1927. That was a 1927 Packard. 27 Packard. Wow. And how long did it last? What? How long did it last? Well, uh, we uh, at, uh, I had it for about four years when I went up there, but but the neighbor down on the corner over there. Uh, Sold it to me for twenty dollars. That sounds like a deal. It was. We had a lot of fun with that over the years. I've had the great big wheels on it, you know, and whatnot. Didn't you um, turn uh, one of your old rigs into a, a yarder later yeah, on? Yeah, that Packard. Well, tell the story. Well, uh, that Packard motor, and um, I. Um, was hauling logs for a um, guy out at um, Sandy Bend out in North Texas, and he had this big old, uh, big old drum, you know, an order drum hitting there, and uh, uh, so I got, I got that from him, and uh, we took and tore the pack, uh, the old, old Packer down, and. Uh, uh, and another thing, that Packard was all ba built, put together with stainless steel bolts. Stainless yes. steel bolts. Yeah. Wow. And it had a bent, bent um, front fender, some little bit, bent a little bit. And I took a hammer and I was going to like that, and I hit that thing, had twing, hammer flew out of my hand. And that was real metal in that. You couldn't just <laughs> tap it out, you know, like. A, a, no plastic involved. No, no. It, and so. Anyhow, um, Burl Jackson had a bunch of um, GI Cadillac uh, V8s uh, uh, engines and, and uh, uh, this is war surplus stuff. What? World War II surplus. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I got one of them, and that old fitted it in that, and that for the Packard engine was in there. And then I got a. Um, um, Ross uh, Riblet had to get the auto records up there. I got a transmission from him, and then I also got a big truck rear end with duels from him. He gave them to me to put under me set back, and I had that that drum that I got on that, and then I had it so that uh, the Packard engine there was a there's a transmission there, and uh, between that I had a sprocket there so I could run a, 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 a truck rear end set there hooked up so I could run the winch. Like a power takeoff? Power for a power takeoff. Made a power takeoff the winch for it. And, and, uh, um, so you could drive it out there in yeah, the woods and then just it. hook it up to... You could just drive it up the road. To Boy, pull you could, logs. You could, you could, and um, um, one of my friends and whatnot was uh, 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 Don Tennant. And uh, tenant and then uh, uh, tenant way. What? Tenant mansion. Tenant way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 one of them was a big shot at. No, at uh, John John Tenant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was Is that his dad or uncle? That's his dad. Okay. And whatnot, and they they bought a place up on on Mount Pleasant up there, and it had a, a whole bunch of fruit trees out there. And um, they wanted them out, mm -hmm. so we took that thing and ran that old Packard to re that um, uh, Cadillac engine would really make it go. And man, I went up there and we took and tied that 
sling down and we run that line out around through the trees and then we hook it up to one up there and, and then start pulling and we pull the trees over you know roots and all <laughs> pull them over and pull them out with that clear wow. the place with it for it mm. and then they, they had some uh, he had some timber up here that made it it made a good log loader too and yard logs it worked good but we had a lot of fun with that and we made 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 pretty good money with it too and uh, then um, um, oh, crap. Uh, Mead Ziegler was in the, uh, uh, was a, a Cub Scout, and then he was in the Scouts and whatnot. And, but his dad had a, had a um, body shop, uh, I mean, an auto shop for cars. And uh, he bought a big car, I forget what it was, and, and, uh, uh, he seen my Cadillac engine I had in that yard and wanted to know where I got it and I said I got it from Burl Jackson. So he went out there and got one from Burl Jackson and they put it in that that car and um, but it was the, the, the transmission was was for heavy equipment and stuff, trucks and stuff, automatic transmission. Mm -hmm. and it was a little more severe than a car gun and <laughs> <laughs> and they had it and stomped on it one time and they bent the, the rear end and had so much power in the bent, you know, and, and they had to fix it and whatnot. And, wow. and I told him, I said, oh, I forgot to tell you that they used, when they put it in a car, they have to do some changing in the transmission so it's not so severe, you know. Right. He said, now you tell me. <laughs> what was that uh, time that uh, Mead Ziegler was... Uh, running the uh, oh, that was when it, when, it, when he was the Cub Scouts. Yeah, and yeah. He built up. They had they had, cart. they had a um, uh, over by the Washington School there, coming down that hill. They have uh, soap box. Right? We made a soap box soap box car. Robbed some wagon wheels off of a wagon and all that down, and and we built it. And they had a set there and a steering he had like this here steer and me was a he was the best one of the of the den there that to drive it he was driving going down the hill and he got down the hill a ways and his hat blew off and he made a huey right in the right in the road and I, I just had a heart attack because i thought he was going to flip over but it didn't flip over picked his hat up got his back on his head and got down and won the race beat the others down. <laughs> I bet that was something to see. Oh, it was. Everybody, <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, but he just whipped around and got his hat. And, and, uh, and, uh, Mead had some moxie. Yeah, he went up. He just passed away here in Ottawa. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he did. And, uh, uh, yeah, we, Lots, we had lots of good times, but uh, we were all the time we were supervised. And then when we had that boat accident, and uh, uh, there was we was coming up the river, and right there at the mouth of the uh, water, mouth of the Calots there, fiber, uh, where they brought their log pond in there and the other in there, they had a big dredge, what they're sucking and dredging and uh, thing, and we come up and. And at, at that time, when the ships went up the river, they'd create a section. And any of the boat, there was the Sea Scouts and a bunch of them, and there was um, uh, the boat rolled over, and um, the kids and... Um, Is that a sailboat or a uh, It was a sailboat, a big 30-foot uh, uh, lifeboat, and the you know, sailboat went on, they had a mast on it. And, and the kids was all to the one side, Watching the dredge and all that stuff, and and about the next thing they knew, it, it, instead of being bounced back there, you know, so it keep it kind of balanced. Right. And and uh, the suction of the dredge, and um, Dad was in the in the water, and on the roof we had a a, a whole bunch of life. The ones that couldn't swim, or something like that, 
had life, jer life jackets on. And uh, uh, then the ones that could swim, and they was in the water, so I got grabbed all of, we had the big life jackets with big pieces of cork in them, you know, I think, and they'd hold two, three people up. I dove in with them going around, and the ones that was in the water that didn't get it, giving them life jackets, and uh, um, uh, Dave Ammons was in the water, and there was a, some mariner, I can't remember her name now, but she, she was having trouble, he was helping her, so I gave them a life jacket put on it and told them to hang on to it. Well, uh, she said that the next thing that um, she knew, Dave swam off somewhere. Well, he drowned. That coat soaked up and drowned anyhow, but when we got to check it head, we couldn't even find him. I didn't know about that, but we went over there and um, uh, there was another girl in there that, um, they didn't know who it was, but she had a life jacket on, and so somebody said she must have been. So Hugh Ashley was there swimming. Dive dove down underneath the boat, pulled her out. She had an air pocket underneath the boat mm -hmm. in there, and she was fine. And um, uh, Dad was holding up Bonnie Jean Edgel, because she couldn't swim. And I got over there with a, I had the life life jacket, and. Dad had a way of, of swimming like he was running with his legs and he could hold it up. And um, he would hold it up and he just give her a big toss to me and went down. And uh, I got the life jacket on her and then the, the boat come over that was with, with the thing there and um, picked her up, put her on the boat and then I dove for Dad. and. Uh, I dove and dove and dove and, and I could feel like I could, Dad had long hair and I felt like I could feel his hair, you know, but I couldn't get him. And finally I come up for her and uh, the guys grabbed me and he said, that's enough. He says, if, if he's been down too long, he, he wouldn't be. So anyhow, um, um, uh, David Bear was a cousin to Dad and uh, the next day, and then there was a, a couple of fishermen over in Rainier that uh, come out there, and they had uh, lead lines, and they had took, hooked on uh, 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 about 16-inch lines with a hook on them, and they could go along drifting that lead line, and if it was going down, you know, in the body, that would hook onto the the clothes, you don't pick them up. They said they, put, they got a lot of them. But we did that for two days down there and we never found it. And uh, um, well, we took the roof down there, our boat, and, and went you know, in another boat and you know, driven along. And they, uh, the fishermen was in there too. That, uh, and we couldn't find them. And then it was a little couple months later, they found him clear down on. Uh, his body, you know how they had a dead but his wristwatch, they could identify his, with his wristwatch he had. And they had the funeral for him. And then I pulled our boat out and uh, the, uh, stored it there at Edgel's uh, um, and lost all interest in the boat. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Some guy bought it, and the last I heard, it was up on up on uh, some beach up north. Um, Nia Bay or something? Uh, uh, Nia Bay? Yeah, somewhere up there north. And, and uh, um, on the ocean, the guy, the guy that bought it was going to make a deep sea trawler out of it. And um, anyhow, uh, the bank called me up and said it was up there on the beach, and if I wanted it back, and I said, no, I don't. And how old were you when uh, all of this happened? Oh, I was um, about 17, I think, 16, 17, I can't remember. And anyhow, um, um, the people at the lodge got Dad the um, uh, Carnegie Hero Fund. There's a book in here on it. Uh, and he says, there's settings there and on. And then she also got a pension from them for the rest of her life. Your mom did? Yeah, from Carnegie. 
the books in there on the where the other books were on that little thing there. Right. Yeah. Uh, and his his thing is there too. Is his metal. Metal. Yeah. Yeah, I sure like to have known your your dad. I'll bet he was something. Yeah, that was uh, I can't remember what, but it was really something. And and uh, um, <clears throat> when he picks it up on, on he always had a, had a brought a big bunch of stuff, you know, and we had it on the boat there. And, and then during uh, lots of times, just with. Just our family, we take the boat, uh, and always there was always a. Uh, Fred and I had a friend or two with us, and then, uh, uh, and then of course there was a sister and you know, others there, and we'd either go down to Astoria, and, and, but uh, <laughs> Mom and them and didn't like going out over the bar and uh, you know like this here, so we'd go up the river, uh, uh, and we go up. Um, through um, um, the dam up there. Uh, uh, Bonneville. Yeah. Bonneville. Yeah, Bonneville. And they'd raise us 72, sometimes 80 feet. Wow. Go into the locks there, you know. And that was really funny here and there. And, and the water start coming in, you know, and then you tie to the boat to the buoys and it'd take you up. And uh, that was. Yeah, but it was really spooky is when you went in and the water started going down. It was going down, with it, you know, and then it opened up again. And uh, uh, coming upstream, um, it took quite a while because the, the boat at that time wasn't wasn't quite that fast, you know. And, and uh, uh, we were walking the quite fresh water. Well, we make it up and get in there. And then when we went down, boy, <laughs> you know, was, and then we get up there and there's one time we was up there and um, when a railroad comes down along the rocks on the, on the Washington side it goes through and it's got a little tunnel and it comes out and there's a kind of a little bay in there and then it goes in another place and then a tunnel and a rock tunnel through there. We we pulled into one of those little bay things and hear a train come by down through us you know uh, and it's in there and, and the train on the it curves around and then goes through the tunnel and it kind of leans when you sit down there looking up it looks like the train was leaning right over it wow mom took that look one look all that she said i ain't spending no night here <laughs> so we got to go clear across the river and tie it up and and uh, spent the night there and, uh, so after that we had this and then another time we had a big dog with us that um was um Fallon, we pulled in up there. Um, I can't even remember. It's a pretty good sized town up there on uh, the Washington side up above. And Stevenson? Yeah, yeah, Stevenson. We pulled in there and, uh, and got uh, gas, and then we went up a little bit farther, and there was a nice beach there and a grassy area. We, Fred and I took off and and the dog went with us, pal, and pretty soon here, he, a nice trail, we was walking up there, and we was quite a ways from the boat. And here come pal down the, down the road, just the trail, just, just a really picking up and going, and about that time, well, what's the matter with him? And bang, we found out. Hornets was chasing him. <laughs> oh. And they chased us. And we come running down, and, and uh, all, all three of Fred and I and, and dog went right in the river. You know, and we had hornet bites on us mm -hmm. all around, you know, we was, them hornets was mad. Somebody had really been giving them a bad time. Cause They're mean. They're and, mean. And, and uh, so, anyhow, and, and Dad got, got got us in the boat and got the dog in the boat and, and uh, we moved up the river a ways and <laughs> no hornets. Wow. Got about a minute. Yeah, I think that's a good amount for today, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, we we uh, we paid more attention where we went. We didn't let when we got on the shore and let dog to go. Well, we didn't let him run off like he did the first time. Right. 
And he wasn't too anxious to run off either. <laughs> yeah, I bet he wasn't. I bet he wasn't. Well, that was pretty fun, Bill. Yeah. We got we got to do this a couple of times. You got plenty of stories left in you. Well, that's uh, it's really yeah. neat to hear that stuff. You get, get to thinking about you know things like that, but uh, uh, still, yeah, yeah, I was sure got a kick out of when those um, big shots from the off from the. I can't what they call them. Moose Lodge. Right? Moose Lodge. For the lodge and stuff, you know, there. And, uh, and the, the company, what, and, and uh, supervise. So, yeah. And Dad fixed that dinner for them. And boy, they just thought that was. They lapped that right up, there, they? Yep. Alrighty. That's about it.